guess. Well, uh, you all know my first guest. She is an extremely talented individual. Uh, Liza has won just about every award you can in our business. Three Tonys, an Oscar, an Emmy, Golden Globe. And she'll be performing in St. Louis at the Fox Theater, October 24th through the 30th. And in Houston at Jones Hall, November 5th through the 7th. And this Monday, she stars in a uh, television movie called A Time to Live. It's at 9 o'clock and here on NBC. Would you all come Miss Liza Minnelli? stops. That's swell music. Whose is it? <laughs> it's wonderful. It's good to see you. Thank you, Johnny. It's lovely to see you. I too. didn't notice this till last night. I uh -huh. saw you, uh, you, were, you were attending something last night. It was on the news. Uh -huh. And I, I did one of these. I looked and I looked again and I said, <laughs> I don't remember her being quite as blonde as that. Well, I've never, I've never been this blonde. I don't think but the, so. the woman that I play in the, in the movie that I made in A, a Time to Live is, is, has yeah. this color hair. And it made me look a little less Italian. So I figured I'd better go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Does that, does that stay? Does that keep? I mean, does it come out or if you just let your natural well, color my, come my back? Well, my dad actually told me a great trick because to bleach your hair is awful. You yeah. have to keep doing it every couple of weeks. So he said, get it sun streaked. So that's just what I've done. Yeah. And I can't be bothered to go back to the hairdresser, so I'm going to keep it for a while. Yeah, why not? It looks pretty. Yeah. Do you like being a blonde? Yeah. I, it's a change, you know. Yeah. You've been tra you, you travel a lot. You're, you know, you work very, very hard. What do you do when you take a break? I mean, you're down at Jones Hall, and you're going to be in St. Louis. Well, I was and... just off for a month. Really? Yes, I made, I made the movie, and then I got a month off, and I had the best time. I just went to Connecticut. Yeah? And my husband and I, we full drama got, yay! Oh. We have a little house there. It was really late. Is that your full-time uh, home now, Connecticut? Uh, New York is. Yeah. Yeah. But you go up to Connecticut. Yes. You weren't there during the earthquake, were you? Yes, I was. What did it feel like in New York City? I thought I was in L.A. <laughs> I didn't know where I was. I woke up and everything was shaking, and I thought, "What? Well, what? No, this can't, I must be dreaming because I'm in New York. This can't be right." And I went back. Yeah, to I'm sleep. trying to wonder. I, I don't recall ever reading that New York has ever had an earthquake. I don't think they're on a fault line or anything like that. Well, I found out that the building that I live in is on a fault line. <laughs> I did. Did it? Did you feel? Yes, me? they told me that, and I went down in the basement, and there's an enormous crack. Yeah. So I think that's when we started to go to Connecticut more. And yeah, more. <laughs> yeah, that's very strange for New York. As you say out here, we're kind of used to it. It's like a, it's like a big ride out here. It you know? is. <laughs> when you go out or try to get away from not being Liza Minnelli, do you find it difficult to? Well, women can change their hair a little bit, and you can change your look by, you know, the glasses and so forth. Yeah. But do you like the anonymity sometimes when you go out? Or, now, how do you get it if you do? Well, I find that it's really. Do you ever easy. wear disguise when you go out just to not be noticed? Well, I tried once, Yeah. and it was just disastrous. It was in Dallas, and I wanted to go to the fair. Uh -huh. They had this beautiful fair there, and I really wa I wanted to go on all the rides. Yeah. And it was lovely, and everybody else was going, and I felt trapped in my hotel room. So a friend of mine went out and got a great big, you know, like, beehive, uh -huh. but it was really blonde wig. And then I put on a lot of green eyeshadow uh -huh. and a real short skirt and big glasses, I thought, no, they, they, I'll be fine. What you doing? And on the way through the lobby, someone said, hi, Liza, change your hair? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God, I wonder if they think I dress this way all the time. <laughs> and the, the silly part about it is, I did it once in New York, because I wanted to, I wanted to take my kids ice skating or something. It's silly, but you feel so silly yourself. Oh, you feel like a fool. Putting it on, and then somebody comes up and nails you. Right away. Nails right. you right off. <laughs> Talk, about the picture that's coming up. Yes. How did this come about? Well, I... I, want, I really like what they're doing on TV. I think right. they're doing wonderful movies. And yeah. they do great character studies now that they, in a way they don't do in the movies anymore. Anyway. Right. So uh, I was sent the book called Intensive Care. Right. And it was by a woman called Mary Lou Weissman. And I read it, and it just floored me. I thought it was so wonderful. It was an ordinary woman in an extraordinary circumstance right. instead of a, another extraordinary character to play. And I, right. I just wanted to be a regular guy yeah you know? <laughs> i look forward to i look forward to seeing it somebody told me i knew when you were when you were growing up you went to we have a little excerpt we're going to show later you went to how many schools 22. are you serious <laughs> yes <laughs> do you remember most of them or any of them at all yeah i, I think i averaged about a minute 40 in each you know <laughs> why is that because your folks were moving around all the time yes but not only that but here in la because we kept changing zones 
Oh, that's right. If you move yes. into a different area, then you... I went to seven schools alone here. But I, I had a really good time. First of all, I hated school. I just didn't Did like it. I was never there long enough to yeah. like it, you know. It was kind of like going to another airport to me, I think. Were and you bored in school? I was in some schools. I was yeah. bored in others. I just loved them. You know, I went to performing arts in New York City, and I loved that. Twenty-two schools. But, it, you know, it, it, I know it sounds like a lot, but it didn't seem like a lot, and I, I wouldn't change it for anything. I met more wonderful people that I still know. That's kind of, kind of an education in itself. It is, around getting indeed. 22 schools. Yeah. Freddie was giving me this. Do you have the, this film clip? Do we know this little scene we're going to see? Does well, it need any explanation to uh, let the audience know what's happening? Dealing with the problem? Well, yeah, it's... Uh, Mary Lou has a child who's dying, and her husband, who is a man and who wants to fix it. All right. And this can't be fixed. Therefore, he's kind of running away from it, and uh, it's the confrontation, I think. Okay, watch the monitor. You're scared, aren't you? It's dangerous loving Pete. So you're keeping us at a nice, safe distance. You're scared. I'm not scared. You cannot go on behaving as if nothing is happening in this family. Is that what I'm doing? Yes, it is. And the funny thing is, is you're missing something so important. Even when it's rotten, you're missing really knowing Pete. I know you love him. I also know that you don't want to get in there because you're scared it's going to hurt too much later on. But I'm not going to let you get away with that. Now make up your mind. What's it going to be? Are you in or are you out? I'm in. Oh. Larry. I love you. I just need to share this. Look at me. I've got to share this with somebody. <laughs> Not just the, the work and the lack of sleep, but loving him. You finally got to see him here. It wasn't turned on. That's not <laughs> I was just ready to say that's a lovely scene, except I didn't see it because the monitor that sits right to our right was not turned on. So we're sitting here looking at a blank screen. <laughs> what a great scene. It's one of those great technical problems we face in television. It's called turning the set on. Yes. <laughs> I would imagine you, you're, you're a natural, you work from instinct, don't you, as a natural actress? Just yes. Just reacting I, to... I think I've worked with enough really good directors and other really well-trained and wonderful actors to pick up certain techniques for, that help me out for, instead of just having to, you know, Bluff my way right. along on my instincts. I've got some pretty good training. You know, you've done about everything now. You've played, uh, you played concerts, nightclubs. You've done motion pictures, television, stage. Is there anything you fantasize about that you'd like to do? Some role? You say, hey, boy, would I like a crack at something like that? Well, you know, oddly enough, it was this, this really kind this of one? a thing. It, something that was really... I guess you look for modern-day heroines yeah. all the time. But, you know, you kind of look for the modern... Joan of Arc part to right. play. And this lady is just so wonderful. She's become a good friend of mine. Yeah, that's great. Hi, Mary Lou. <laughs> we will take a break. We'll be right back after this. When I first, in fact, when I first met Michael, he taught me a terrific song, which has kind of an interesting story behind it. The song was written by uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein for Oklahoma, and it was cut, right? And then uh, my father found it, and he put it into a movie that he was making called Meet Me in St. Louis, and it was cut. And then uh, Mr. Sinatra found it, and he put it into a movie that he was making called Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and it was cut. <laughs> so I've been thinking about it, and I think I'll cut it. <laughs> No, I'm only kidding. It's a really lovely song. It's called Boys and Girls Like You and Me. <laughs> we walk on every city street. We walk on lanes where branches meet. And stars send down the blessings from the blue. We go through storms. Touch and fear, and so we walk from year to year, believing in each other 
as we do, bravely marching forward to by two. Boys and girls like you and me. Just as we love with the same dream in their eyes, songs and kings and many things have their day and are gone. But boys and girls like you and me. Thank you, Liza. Thank you.